What's up, guys? This is a Tai Zen currency analyst for PrisonOrFreedom.com. Um, it's a blog where we talk about the different things, uh, strategies, techniques, tools, investments, and technology that can help bring freedom to people's lives in their health, wealth, and relationships. In this um, episode, um, the second episode of currency analysis number two, I want to talk about how to analyze the trend of Bitcoin, gold, silver, and the euro. Um, we try to squeeze in so. Let me go ahead and get started here. I like to use the um, tradingview.com um, website because it provides uh, the tools and the, the easy user interface here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in the last episode, we were t I was saying that if you want to take a conservative long right here, you can get long right here near this trend line, and then if it breaks below the low of this, this, or this, you can get out. Right? Um, it did go up a little bit, and then it pulled back down. So you. Sh um, you didn't have to wait until you hit this line to get a stop loss. Um, you could have gotten out when you started seeing that it started to roll over on the lower time frame charts. And what I mean by that is, let me just go ahead and scroll down here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is this right here. Um, you don't always, just because you put your stop at this blue line here, does not mean that you have to wait until price gets there. If you see the price go in your favor and then it starts to roll over and then it makes a second attempt right here in this green candle, in these two candles, it made an attempt to go back up, but it didn't. There was weakness because the selling pressure came in and it pushed the price down. And as you see the body of each candle get longer and longer, that's a very, very good sign that you know the price momentum is coming in towards the downside. So you could have easily gotten out for a break even on this trade or get out when it broke the low of this or you know anywhere here. You don't necessarily have to wait for this long candle to happen, get down to here, and then take your stop loss remember um, you can always you're always welcome to move your stop loss uh, to be smaller you never do want to move your stop loss to be wider okay so let's go ahead and back up to the one day here um, the news from China um, out of China that they 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 prohibited the third um, third party payment processors from uh, allowing uh, Chinese citizens or Chinese people to deposit their Chinese money or the yuan or the RMB, however you want to look at it, into an exchange, um, the largest exchange in the world, which is BTC China right now, is scared, spooked everybody. And we have a lot of nervous, novice traders in the market right here. So it sent them tanking down here and then the price snapped right back up. The Although it may look like it's a bad thing, I actually consider it to be a good thing because the more that uh, right now while BTC, uh, Bitcoin is still young and it's still only sub $1,000 in price or close to it, it's important that we hit it, the governments and everybody, computer hackers and everybody, hit it with everything they've got, rules, laws, regulations, do everything they can to ban Bitcoin and to destroy it. The reason why I invite the governments and the computer hackers and people around the world to do that is because that will allow Bitcoin and its core developers in the Bitcoin community and Bitcoin as a protocol to be able to weather the storm and deal with it as if it was a virus. These government regulations, these computer hackers, everybody that tries to hurt the Bitcoin protocol and the public ledger and the blockchain, all it does is it allows Bitcoin to feel what it's like to be quote unquote infected with these government uh, bands which are like viruses to the human body so it develops an immunity to it so what happens is every time Bitcoin takes a hit it weathers the storm it, it takes the brunt of the impact and then it recovers from it and what happens is it it develops that into its uh, or uh, basically its immunity and then in the future when it happens again Bitcoin sails right through it so right now while Bitcoin is young I strongly believe that it needs to these government bans and regulations and, and different things to try to destroy it because ultimately after it survives these hurdles and obstacles it will come out shining. So after all this nonsense is done when Bitcoin rises here it will punch right through 1240 easily. Okay, So um, back to this trend line analysis here when we see something like this um, the ideal thing is to grab two parallel lines and draw a trend line down here so that gives us a quick idea right away where it's at. Now, like I said, my policy is, you know, everybody draws their trend lines different. 
my policy has been to always draw it from significant points and the most significant hits. So in other words, I draw it from the corner of this red candle to the corner of this red candle and to the uh, wick simply because there's where the most significant hits at. If you need to squeeze it in like this to where it hits this, this, and this, that's fine. There's no law that says that's wrong. Um, just whichever one you do, just try to keep it consistent, right? So I'm going to touch this, the corner of that red, and some of this, right? I, I prefer the majority hits rule, okay? So somewhere in here is fine with me. If I'm off a little bit, it's not a big deal, okay? I don't, I don't lose sleep over that, and you should not lose sleep over it either, okay? Um, these are all just guidelines, okay, to let you know where we're at. Okay, so with Bitcoin... Like again, there's only three things that price can do, either go up, go down, or go sideways, okay? So once we drew that channel in, now we have an idea, right? I'm not gonna update this trend line simply because, and when I say update, that means I'm not gonna move it, okay? I'm not gonna move it simply because price was here the last time uh, uh, we talked about this. It dropped due to the Chinese announcement that they're banning the third-party payment processors. Um, and then it bounces right back up to where it was at originally when we did the first episode of the currency analysis. So when it bounces back that fast and that quick, that lets me know that this is not significant move. Okay, but we're drawing this um, in here anyway. Okay, simply because um, we need to have some guidelines, some road markers, or some street signs to let us know the potential direction of uh, Bitcoin. Okay, and like and so. We're also going to update this. Notice how price went right through uh, the low of this area here and the low of this uh, tail and the low of what I thought to be was significant here. So when that happens, we need to update it. So I'm going to move this down here to the next levels available, which is around here, the bottom of this tail and the bottom of this candle. And then I'm also going to move this down to the bottom of these two bodies right here. Okay, notice how it hits the bottom of that body here, the bottom of here, and then the top of that wick. Okay, and then I'm going to move this one out of the way and maybe um, put it at right here. Okay, to about right there, which is the next part where it's launched from. Okay, I'm always looking for where price launches. So price launch, it was going sideways and it launched out of that sideways up to here, went sideways a little bit launch up to here there's some profit taking right there and then when price fell back down it stopped right there okay and then when price fell down here it stopped right there too okay now the reason why we don't use this anymore in this is simply because that's no longer significant because this just chewed up all those orders that were sitting here all the buyers and sellers that were waiting to get in or out they got hammered I mean with this red candle so that's no longer significant okay so Price hasn't come down far enough to hit these and all these other areas. That's why they're still significant, okay? Now, like I said, there's three directions that price can go up, down, or sideways. If it continues to go up, right, I would have to wait for it to be above the high of this wick right here to take it to a long, okay? And then immediately put your stop right below whatever this red candle is. If it goes below that, you definitely want to get out, okay? And then, um, obviously, the profit targets would still be the same. It'd be up to here or to here. First profit target here, second profit target there, okay? Now, if price decides to roll back down, okay, if it continues to roll back down, um, I'm, I would look at price maybe going sideways up to somewhere near here, maybe for another day, another candle before it starts to fall. And if it falls either from here or in the next couple of days over the weekend, if it falls below this, right, um, we have a high, high probability of coming all the way down to what I, to, to this area right here, okay, to, to three, the low 300s or light, right below 300, okay, and that would equate to the 80% pullback that the last two major uh, pullbacks had in Bitcoin, okay, so that's the analysis of Bitcoin. Let me go over here to some other uh, uh, currencies that I believe to be important here. Um, the euro, uh, let's switch over to the euro real quick here, okay? And again, we're going to pull out to the um, 
one the daily chart and we look at it and the first thing we notice is that it's been going kind of like a slightly downward sideways motion so what we're going to do is this we are going to draw a channel again okay now notice that when I draw the channel on this okay notice how I go from here to here to here okay now that channel was very easy to draw okay however let's take a closer look at it notice how that this is a very significant level it got up to here and it came back come down here let's make some adjustments here what if we took a look at it like this what if we took a look at it like this right then what happens is now we see that a different picture we see that price has actually been going sideways between here okay so that's kind of like gives you a 10 degree angle right there but I'm gonna go ahead and stay with this simply and ignore that top part right there because this is to me more significant right there and then I'm gonna put these two right there so where it hits that area that area and this right here and that would be like my big picture long-term view of um, the euro and then if we draw another channel from the bottom of this one um, to right here and we move it up to here we can see that it's either there where it hits this point this point and this point let me just enlarge the candle some so you guys can see it right or we can move it up to right here to where it hits this point now ideally what we want to do is we want to see where it hits the most points notice how it hits here price came up here it pulled back right there and then it tried to break down below that again it did but notice how this line has a lot of action right here this trend line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with that for now okay and I had already taken it long somewhere down here and took profits um, up to here and now I took it short I'm um, short from here down and putting my stop above this okay um, actually I put my stop I think above all this nonsense right here right there so my target is to go back I'm gonna draw in just a little quick trend line here um, right there okay just gonna draw in just a little small trend line right there like a little short term intermediate term trend line so I'm looking to come down to here and see if it'll break through and come to here now if you sit through this <coughs> expect some pullbacks okay because notice how when price comes down notice how it bounced back and forth it, it, it vibrates back and forth so you can expect that so even though uh, the Ben Bernanke um, when he spoke here and price fell uh, I'm almost convinced that he has let his buddies know that he's about to open his mouth and say something so to go ahead and short right uh, up here so I mean every time the Ben Bernanke opens his mouth uh, the price moves massively okay so there's it happens so consistently that I am convinced that there is some insider trading to where he lets everybody in his buddies or somebody at the banks the big banks and stuff like that know that he's about to open his mouth and to get ready to short and so that's why they bank on these things okay now that's just uh, my personal opinion um, I don't have no evidence for that other than the fact that price moves moves massively every time he has his uh, uh, announcements okay so that right there if you miss this if you miss this move okay notice how there are several opportunities where you can jump in on this um, hold on here I did something wrong here I moved the wrong um, piece here let me go ahead and get that straightened back out right there okay so if you'll notice that there is inside here there's a trend in here notice how it hits here along here you can make an attempt to go long when it hits somewhere around here okay right there if you're an aggressive trader if not I would wait um, until it hits comes down to here near the uh, 132 area before I take a look at taking it long if you miss this short right here it's okay 
It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Just wait. You can take an aggressive short-term trade near here or wait until and be more conservative and wait until it hits this bigger trend line. It's up to you. Uh, it's up to your experience level and it's up to the amount of risk that you're willing to tolerate. Okay. So that's the trend that I see on the uh, long-term and short-term and intermediate-term trends um, that I see in, um, in the euro and the opportunities that's available. Let's come over here and jump over to gold and silver real quick. Okay, um, with silver, okay, I invest in both the physical silver, even though I think it's worthless, um, but there is opportunity there. Um, I invest in physical silver simply because I use it to commemorate certain events in my life. Um, you know, I had a um, son that was born in the year of the dragon, so I like to get some dragon coins to commemorate his uh, birth. And then I also had a daughter uh, born this year in the year of the snake, so I like to get some coins, uh, silver coins, just to commemorate their birth. Um, I'm not getting the silver, physical silver, because I'm a silver stacker. Uh, even though I am the Asian prepper, I don't prep with precious metals because I think that it's a complete waste of time. And that's just a personal opinion. Um, silver, physical, precious metals is not really usable as a money or a currency because it's too big, it's too bulky, you cannot transmit it across the world. Um, there's people, the majority of the people do not know what silver and gold is when they see it. They do not know how to tell if it's real or not. And so that's the reason why I do not believe in gold and silver as a currency or as a money, okay, or as anything. Um, I, I buy it for commemorative reasons only, just because I like the designs on there. And that's it, okay, nothing more. Um, so I buy physical silver and I short the paper, okay. So I've been short the paper silver since it was somewhere around here, okay. I drew a trend line. Let me just show you guys what I did. I just drew a sh very, very short-term trend line um, that would look like somewhere like that. And I shorted it when it got somewhere right here. I think it was on one of these candles I shorted it, okay. So I've been short silver since then, okay. Um, let me get rid of that. All right, so if you miss the move on silver, the next ideal place would be to, let me just do this. I'm gonna compress this. The next ideal place would be somewhere, again, along this trend line, okay, to short it. And then what I would do is just to be safe, I, I would not look to short it anytime here because we're near this support area from way back here, from way near all this consolidation right here. If you'll notice in the back here, you see this area of consolidation here and this area of consolidation before a price broke through. In other words, uh, the price of silver, when it, it came up to here, it tried to test this 18, 16 to $18 level and it failed and it fell back down and then it took multiple t more times here it, it took, you know, dozens more times here to finally penetrate it and bust through. And it shot up ever since with all that silver manipulation that was in the market, okay? Now, I don't care about this manipulation. I really don't. I, I really don't care if the market makers are moving the, the markets. I don't really don't care if Chase Bank is moving it. I really don't care about none of that, okay? All I care about is that I manage my risk and I manage my positions, Okay, and I look at what the high probability is. Okay, I, I can sit here and talk about the conspiracy theories of what the Federal Reserve and what the banks and what everything is doing, and there's nothing I can do about that because I'm just a little peon. I'm just a little, I'm just like a flea out in a multi billion, trillion dollar market. Okay, there is nothing I do or say that's going to affect the market. So, what I can do though is that I can manage how much I lose. I cannot manage how much I gain, but I can definitely manage how much I lose. So when things start going against me, I'm out like a thief in the night. I don't stick around too long, okay? So when price hits here, if you miss the, the short on silver, paper silver, 
Even if you are holding physical silver, I still recommend that if there's an opportunity to short the hell out of paper silver, you do it. Because then that that makes up for the loss that you're gaining on your physical silver. Okay, so it's kind of like a hedge, right? So the, the next best place to do it is to wait until it bounces off this support area. It's going to come in here and there's going to be a bounce up. And when it hits here, somewhere along here, then that's where you want to take it short. Now, if it bounces here and breaks right through this, don't panic, okay? Wait until it comes up to this trend line, and then you can either short again, okay? Or wait until it comes down and then take it short and load up the bolt then, okay? So now I've been waiting for silver to fall so that I can get the physical silver, for uh, to commemorate my kid's birth and a few other events, okay? So I'm waiting. I, I just can't wait until silver prices drop even more. I don't believe that silver should be way up here. Uh, silver is one of the most abundant elements that we have on the planet Earth. Anybody that says it's rare, uh, I, I refuse to believe that. At any given time, there has never been a time in my life where I could not go out and buy silver. So whenever somebody tells me that it is rare or it's not, available I don't believe that because I can buy silver at any time so that's just my personal opinion so don't let you know that, that that's just my opinion okay so whenever something's rare it makes it hard to get okay you want to get the first comic book issue of Batman or Superman or the Incredible Hulk now that's rare to get the original copies okay that's not easy to get if you want to buy it it's not something that's readily available silver Gold, things like this are readily available at any second, any minute, any given time. Okay, so when something is that readily available in the market, um, I am not convinced that it is rare and precious. Okay, so back to this again. Okay, if this falls, by the way, if this falls, I, I'm looking at uh, when when silver falls, I'm looking at it going over to way down here. I mean, I mean uh, way past 14, 12 and everything. Of course, there's going to be some bumps along the way, like right here at 1450. There's going to be some more bumps at, you know, uh, in the in the, the 12 to mid $12 range. But ultimately, I'm looking for it to come back down here to below $10 to around the $10 range. Okay. So that's my long term outlook and the trend analysis of silver. Let's take a look at gold real quick. Um, let's see what gold looks like here. Now, despite what everybody says that gold is more valuable than Bitcoin, now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I mean, if you guys know me, I never claim to be smart, okay? You know, I know a bunch of people, you know, almost the majority of my friends are smarter than me, so, you know, for me to say that I'm smart is not really um, being honest with myself, okay? But here's what I see, okay? See this trend line? Um, this this high point is not going to be really that um, significant anymore. So I'm going to come over here and use the more current high points, which is more like this. Okay? Which is more like this. Remember, when I draw my trend lines, I just draw it based on majority hits. Okay? So if, if you're not, if you're wondering why I'm not drawing it accurate, that's just my style of drawing trend lines. It is not the end all be all. Okay, so that's it right there. That's what I see. I see the trend line coming up here, hitting against this former trend line. It finally breaks through, hits this one, and then it's just bouncing back and forth through here. And if you look closely, we can even do this. Um, we can even do a parallel, okay, a clone and watch what happens here. Watch when I pull this here. Notice how the price of gold has been hugging this small channel back and forth. Okay, I'm paying attention to that. I'm really, really paying attention to that uh, right there. And now that, that, that sideways channel has opened up a little bit. So that's what we're looking at right here. Okay, just, just, just want to show you the overall trend. Okay. Now, if price of gold breaks this right here, let me go ahead and mark this in so that we have it for future reference. If the price of gold breaks this low, whatever it is, uh, 1180 or so, uh, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but it's somewhere around there. 
So if gold breaks that, let me change this to a weekly so we can see it better. Okay. Right there. So if gold breaks this low right here, it's all over. Okay. There's going to be a small speed bump right there, but it's not that significant. I don't believe that to be very significant right there. Okay. Because we're in the middle of a channel. There's open field. There's lots of room to move up to here or come down to here. But because we are on an overall long-term downtrend, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the overall long-term downtrend and rely on that much more so, okay, than, than, than I'm going to rely on that little piece right there that it's going to cause it to go back up. So when price comes down to here, my projected target is going to be down to here, right there, down to there. And if it breaks below this level right here, and you know what? I would even say that it's actually this zone right here, this support zone between there, that area right there. If it breaks below this support area, I'm looking for it to come all the way down to here, to come down to there, okay? Um, no, let me repeat that again come down to somewhere right in there okay see how price hit here fell hit here fell hit here fell hit here fell hit here had a little uh, uh, stumbling right there before it shot up okay so to me that's very significant okay so I'm looking at gold to come down to here to below to right around a thousand dollars okay um, before it pulls back up once it breaks through here, of course it's going to pull back a few times, but that's what my projection is for gold, right? So um, let me make sure that we covered everything here. We um, analyzed the trend of Bitcoin, gold, silver, and the euro, okay? So that will be it. That will conclude my trend analysis of these currencies, right? You know what? Since we got a few minutes, let me just go ahead and do this. Okay, let me go ahead and do the, the, the trend line analysis of Litecoin also since it's the second most popular um, because I really need uh, to get into this here shortly. So let me go ahead and do a trend analysis of this too. Okay, once again, I'm going to do very simple. Okay, remember Asian Prepper here is not the sharpest tool in the shed. So when we try to make too many fancy indicators on here, it doesn't do any good, okay? It doesn't do the Asian prepper much good. So, now, you might say, hey, um, Ty, why did you do this? Why, why did you not draw that um, to the tops, okay, of the candles or to the tops of the wicks? Remember, I have a... a um, a majority rules majority hits policy I draw my trend lines where I see the majority of the action taking place okay so right there we can either put it right there okay like that and and there's no right or wrong in this guys okay it's just a matter of personal opinion okay you know what there's a bunch of hits right there hit here there, 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 okay? Hey, if you want to put it right here, you're welcome to put it right there too because that's where it's price stumbled and it came up and it hit here and it hit here, okay? So if you want to go with that, that's, that's, we'll, we'll go with it, you know? I mean, it's not, it's not going to kill me. It's not going to kill anybody, okay? Um, this, uh, I just noticed something, okay? Um, I don't know why the, uh, the price of um, Litecoin is here. I don't think that that is correct. I, I really don't. I, I don't think that that is correct. Let me check the, the, um, the cryptocurrency market cap here. Litecoin is at $19, okay? So I don't know why Litecoin is over here at 70 cents for, okay? So 
regardless, it, it doesn't matter to me what the price of Litecoin is here. What it matters to me is where do I get in? Where do I get in? Okay. So I'm drawing here. I see a few. Let me just put a support and resistance line right there. That is a significant level. Okay. Price hit here, fell, and broke through. Okay. Price fell and broke through right there. It came back down, bounced right there. Tested it more times. That's the next closest one right there. Okay. That's the next closest one. And so if we draw a little parallel channel here from here, just a little small one, we can see that there is a potential for price to come here, somewhere right here, right there. I would say that there's a very good potential for Litecoin to come down to the bottom of this right here, to come down here to this area before it bounces back up, either to go up or to go down some more. Um, long term, if it falls through this, there's a good chance it will come down to here. Okay, so what I would do is I would look to start getting accumulating some some light coins. Let me just draw this too. Okay, remember these are all long term uh, position trades here. This is not we're not trying to scalp the markets. We're not doing none of that nonsense because we don't have an advantage in the short term. Why? Because it's very volatile. The the um, oh this is only a week. We need to go with the days, okay? And then we need to go with all. So hopefully, well, maybe that's all the data we got. So I don't know where else to get Litecoin charts. Um, this is the only place I know that I can do analysis on. So I'm going to stick with it, okay? So I'm going to look at these different levels here for places to get in to Litecoin right there so I'll start getting some Litecoins when it's in this area and possibly in this area right here okay so that will conclude my trend line analysis of um, of um, the uh, trend of Bitcoin, gold, silver, the euro, and the bonus on Litecoin today. Okay, thanks for uh, watching this uh, currency analysis. Uh, you know, uh, number two here, uh, second episode here. If um, you find this useful, I invite you to uh, subscribe to our um, uh, YouTube channel and subscribe to our mailing list on uh, prisonorfreedom.com. And um, I'll share some more information with you guys on the things that myself and my colleagues and my friends use to allow us to obtain more freedom in our lives. Okay. Again, uh, thanks for uh, watching this episode. And uh, let, let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And let me know if uh, what I can do to help you guys with your analysis. And um, I'll see you in the next episode. Okay. Um, after I make a quick adjustment to this right here. Okay, quick adjustment to that. All right, so thanks for watching this, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.